It's Bourbon Night. Hello, I'm Jed. I'm Sarah. Uh, welcome to part two of our BTAC review. Now, if you haven't seen the first one, go watch that one, please. There's a great cinematic uh, movie <laughs> intro in the beginning. And then we do our top two, which we reviewed the Eagle Rare 17 and the George T. Stack. Spoilers if you haven't seen it, but yeah, which, too late now. Well, those were our, our top two favorite of the mm -hmm. five because we did little nips before and determined that. But that doesn't mean we didn't like the other three. We just wanted to save them for another episode so that we could really dig into them and tell you our thoughts and maybe why they weren't in the top two. We haven't really ranked them yet. We only ranked the top two. So these other are up for ranking. So we're just gonna go in proof order, which means we're starting with the Sazerac uh, 90 proof, Sazerac 18 year, mm -hmm. I should say. Yeah, and then we'll let you know at the end of the episode our thoughts on the ranking of the other three. All right, says 18, 18 mm -hmm. years and four months, five months, five months, Sarah. Five months, 90 proof, lowest of the bunch. And it's a rye. Um, and it's a rye. So obviously there's another rye with the Thomas H. Handy, but there we go. <laughs> That's a rye. I like it. I, like I think it this one is the most classic, you know, in the series in general over time, it has always felt the most like classic rye to me in terms of it having those, you know, kind of pine, effervescent, mm -hmm. baking spice, yeah, sort of earthy herbal notes that come with rye. I think that when people think of, you know, high rye ryes. But it's also not coming off like a 95.5 rye. It's not a forest in your nose. No, like but a pine, it is fairly minty. Pine. Yeah, it is fairly minty. You know, dill, which I enjoy. Effervescent, yes, but not like open you up because I feel like that's the 90 proof of it, right? Yeah. All right, well, to your health. And if you're wondering, yes, we are continuing this episode filming right after the other one. That's why we're wearing the same clothes. Oh my gosh, wow. You you put it together. <laughs> you unlocked the mystery. I think this one has a great mouthfeel. I think 90 proof is perfect for this age statement and mm. it being rye. Proof doesn't always matter so much with rye, especially of older ages. Age is also like... Nothing matters with rye. <laughs> well, the factors are just different. Yeah. I find that with rye... Different rise, measuring stick. It's a different measuring stick, right? Things don't need to be as high of proof and they don't need to be as old in order to get their point across, really. Um, but this at 18 years and 90 proof, I think is the right balance for this product. Now, it is a different ball game also with the age, with a, a rye and a bourbon, because I'm not getting a whole lot of oak. Now, that could also be the proof. This is the lowest proof of the five. The one that we can compare to would be 101 proof, so 11 points higher with the Eagle Rare 17, and also very close in age. That one, for example, had a lot more oak on it. Uh, I do want to point out that for me anyway, this didn't have dill on the uh, nose, but it does on the palate, just a little bit. I love this one. I think because it's an outlier, because of the notes, you know, it's a rye. It's a different than the bourbons, right? That just is a given. And I think for that reason, like, it's not necessarily, it's, it just doesn't fall on my favorite, but I love this product. Like I would drink this regularly if you could find it, but you can't. We've never owned a bottle of this one and I'm okay with that, but I do enjoy it every year. I mean, I wanna still put it in the best rye contention. I think oh, it belongs there. Absolutely, I, I feel like it does belong there too. Um, it's also not exactly my flavor profile, not quite my tempo. Um, not, not quite my <laughs> tempo. And if you get that one, put it down in the comments. Down in the comments, because uh, I <laughs> despise pickles, so a dill note can a lot of times sort of kill kill it for me. I, I like ryes that don't get in that dill area. There are, you know, uses of dill outside of pickles. I don't though, believe you, know? you. No, it, dill is an herb. La 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 la. <laughs> <laughs> Not listening. So that's. Were you racing or were you dragging? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what'd you say? Racing. Isn't that in? From the movie reference. No, it's uh, rushing. Rushing. Were you yeah. rushing or were, were you, you dragging? Were you rushing or were you dragging? Counting four. One, One two, two, three. three. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna slap. Was I rushing or was I dragging? Anyway. <laughs> good movie. Just, good great movie. movie. Oh, if you so haven't good. seen it. Oh, I love it, I love it. Anyway, what were we talking about? Rye? Oh yeah. Yes, I, I do enjoy it. I think it is worthy of going into the best rye of the year contention. I agree. Is this going to be my, because I already know first and second, my third favorite B-Tech? It's, it's not. Ooh, I don't know, it might be mine. Uh-oh. We will have to see. I'm gonna save a little sip of it so I can Same. rank at the end. All right, going up in proof order makes our next one WLW. I am WLW. W. 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 
Um, I am excited to revisit this one because again, you, we just had sips to kind of get our feel for our top two and this one didn't make it into the top two and I really want to dig into why that is. Um, if you watch the episode where we do the top two, then you know we discussed a little bit about it sort of setting a, the highest of bars for itself in previous years. And so now it's like, well, you're fighting kind of an uphill battle every year. Oh man, Which yeah. is both a good and a bad well, thing, Well, it's I like, guess. A, you know, um, a, a board of a company, right? Saying like, we've got to beat last quarter's goal. Mm -hmm. And then you just, eventually you can't At what point does it become it. impossible, right? Exactly, yeah, it, it becomes impossible. Unless you're crooked, and most companies are. Anyway. Uh, Chad. <laughs> Just saying. What a take. Yeah, my hot take on uh, corporations in 2024. You better leave that out. Hey, none of that. <laughs> Not you sponsors, potential sponsors. You're all good. <laughs> You're all... all right, just kidding. The nose is nice. It's just, I just like the other two. Like, it's just not my favorite nose. 125.8 proof is what we're working with here. Mm. And the age, over 12 years, this was aged on a lower floor uh, with a barrel entry proof of 114. So it must have not been that low because it went from 114 up to 125.8 mm -hmm. in those uh, 12 years. So no, 12 years is a share. long time. Yeah, some angel share. Yeah. Not as much, I don't think, on the nose of that signature Buffalo Trace note that we talked right. about on um, the Eagle Rare 17 and the George T. Stag. It's subdued. It's a bit subdued. There is, you know, a nice presence of oak there, but I, what I would expect for a 12-year product. Yeah, the DNA, the Buffalo Trace DNA, that is, the, the cherry grape, is there, but it just seems... It's muted, like a little it, bit. Like they did water it down. I want to taste it. All right, to your health. Okay, there's there's pockets there. There's there pockets are, there. Don't get me wrong. This is very good. Yeah, we're, we're just being very really good. hard on it. Really hard on it because it, it's not... It's, as good. It is very good. It is not exceptional, but it is very, 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 good. very good. Yes. I would not be upset if I received a bottle of this no. or was able to. If you found one of these at retail, oh my so god, you I happened buy across it. it. Of yes, course, you would buy it. Yes. So we we have both the uh, honor and the burden of having five previous years of the whole line, plus little pockets here and there of, of other ones since probably around 2017 to compare this to. So in whiskey, Ooh, a lot I of times, do that. <laughs> ignorance is bliss, um, where if this is your first WLW ever, you are gonna you may be saying this is one of the best whiskeys I've ever right. had. You may say this is exceptional, and I you wouldn't be wrong. You would not be wrong. I just think that there have been more exceptional years. There have. And those are like my dream, my dream dates, dream you dates. know? Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, like I was saying, it, it, has, it has those moments uh, when, you, when, you, it's first, <laughs> when you're first getting it on your palate of the, the classic, uh, you know, plum, fig, uh, grape, cherry, buffalo traceness of it. This is a wheater. Mm -hmm. This doesn't have rye in it, so it is a weeded mash bill. Same mash bill as your Pappy Van Winkles, your Weller 12s, obviously, obviously. your Weller Millenniums, your Weller Now that's another everything. interesting, this at 12 years compared to a Weller 12. Oh. There's gonna be the proof difference. Yeah, I think the proof, Quite the proof is, difference. Is, is everything. Right, uh, yeah. For those, for sure. Plus, Weller 12s are barrels that didn't meet the expectations of a WLW, mm, okay. and they get cut down to 90. Sure, sure, so, sure. But your experience may differ. Yeah, let's talk about what specifically you know, may have dinged this one just a hair to it's keep it out of the top two. It's really it's growing, good. It's growing on me. It's growing on me it's too. It's growing on me, Sarah. It's growing on me too. Oh. Um, it was a tough call to make. It sort of had some rough edges that I hate to say. That for me is what held it back, especially towards the finish. It's just a teeny tiny bit like prickly. Uh, just a few rough edges there towards that finish. Again, this is the thing that keeps it from being like- Exceptional. It, right, that keeps it from being exceptional. That makes it just very, very good. S tier. I thought the other two were more in the exceptional range. I will say this about it, Sarah. The more you drink it, the the the, the those sharp edges get sanded off. Now more is and that? More. Well, mm, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the more you drink it, the more you've your drank. Your faculties. The more you've also drunk. Also dulling. Yeah. Perhaps. Maybe. Maybe. But we're doing small sips here. We are. Um, I'm gonna save the rest of this. I've got a little sip left. It's but like, I, I want to go in for the rest of it, it. To be honest. I do too. I want to go in for the kill. I do too. We're not going to though. We're not. We're gonna hold off. Uh. All right, before we go on to the last one, you know what we want to do. We want to hit pause. I'll tell you about our home on the internet. It's whiskeyambitions.com. It's where you can get the t-shirt and hat that I was wearing in the last episode. Uh, the Glencairns that we're drinking flop, flop, flum. flum. All of our glassware. 
including uh, hoodies because it's getting cold out there, bottle cut candles, and more. Always coming soon at whiskeyambitions.com. Stay tuned for holiday discounts. Yes, that. Um, you can become a patron at patreon.com slash it's bourbonite and join our community for as little as one buck a month. And this holiday season, we've got a few barrel picks already out there. Um, some Russell's Reserve picks coming up, along with some other very exciting things that patrons will get first and usually only access to. Um, there's also discounts on that merch depending on your tier and more. All right, we'll be back right after this. And finally, it's another rye, but it goes up in proof, but down in age. This is the mm. Thomas H. Handy Sazerac rye. The barrels were filled at 125 proof over six years ago. It is now 127.2 proof. So this is also the youngest of uh, all How the did Jack. you say again? Six years. Oh, wow. As, okay. as normal, hmm. as usual. Okay. Yeah, those, those, mm -hmm. <laughs> Rude. Yeah. <laughs> so 127.2 proof, six year oh. rye. Well, I have to say, I think the age does show itself on the nose. All the notes that we've said on the other four for the nose have been like more mature, more mature, more well balanced, definitely with some oak peeking through in there. And I'm not getting the oak on this one, which makes sense because it has spent less time. Agreed, yes, but it, it sort of hides itself because of the rye. I think you Perhaps, know, yeah. if, if you're looking to hide some youth, a rye is a good way to go. And not that six years is particularly young for a rye. I find that absolutely acceptable for a rye. Oh, especially for a rye, yeah. 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 It has DNA in common with the Sazerac 18, of course. Hint just of earthy. more of a youthful, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Earthy, and herbal, little minty. I know mint is an herb, so don't get after me for that, but I, that's the particular one that's sticking out to me. Yeah, I think the headline is the mint here. It does have possibly more eucalyptus. That might be a, a product of age. Maybe you lose a little bit more. Mm. The barrel is maybe hiding that, but this one I feel like is a little bit more effervescent. Yeah, I feel like I can breathe. And it's probably also the proof. More mm -hmm. water also probably tampers that down. True, so. true. All right. Oh, but a lot more rye in your face. Packs a punch in terms of flavor. Yes. No dill that I'm picking up on the first sip, though. No, but it is very pine needles. Yep. Outdoorsy. Correct. Herbal, earthy, minty. Mm -hmm. That oh. eucalyptus is in there. Yes. And it is bold. It's a punch you in your face. It's kind of... It's bold like the George C. Stag was of previous episode. It's that type of bold. And there is some clove and nutmeg notes in here too. Yeah, there are some a baking bit. spice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That nutmeg. It's a little overpowering. I got to say, you think so? I think it's good for me. The, the notes are very in your face, which I would expect again for a barrel proof fry to be very strong, you know, with those notes. Um, it's almost bordering on like candle like intensity for me. Oh. It's a little too intense. Okay. Um, well, I believe we're experiencing it a little bit differently. Okay, you go. Well, I feel like it's it's everything you said note-wise, just without the overbearing force behind it. Mm -hmm. um, and that could be palate fatigue on my part. I might feel differently if this was, a, I, actually I know I feel a, at least a little bit different if this were my first whiskey of the day on yeah. a fresh uh, palate. However, the, the proof isn't overtaking me. And how I pointed out the Saz 18 had that dill note, which was a little bit of a killer. This one doesn't have that dill note. Mm -hmm. I'm appreciating that. I'm not finding the proof to be overwhelming particularly. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I am enjoying it. For a rye, I think it's, it's really good. Is it as good as last year's? No, last mm -hmm. year's was exceptional. And I feel like over the past two, maybe three years, Thomas A. Chandy has, has really kind of uh, come up. Uh, a lot of people would say it's the booby prize of the five BTAC collection. There was one year recently, it was either last year or the year it's before. It's like second place. I definitely didn't feel that way. Right. I felt that it was probably the best ride I had the whole year. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I'm not going to put it to that high of a standard this year, mm -mm. Um, but I do think it's, it's, it's almost a little, I mean, middle of the pack towards the bottom, but I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it quite a bit. So I think maybe that's why I'm being so hard on it is because I remember in that recent year where I found it to be exceptional and it, it really took me by surprise how much I loved it when, as you said, it kind of has this preconceived notion of being like the least desirable of the five of the antique collection. And so that kind of changed my feelings on it. And now for me, 
okay, that raised my expectations for it. So now this one, it's kind of suffering from the same WLW um, sort of bar. Bar, yeah, yeah. Of that, it's it moved its bar up, and now this one, in my opinion, isn't meeting that that they set for themselves. Um, <laughs> it's their own fault. Still very good. Still a very high quality ride. Don't get me wrong. I am being critical on it just because let's of put it what in, it is. Let's put it in the best ride of the year condition as well. Well, if you feel as strongly about it I as do. you do, then I would like to try it again blind. I yeah. do feel that probably one of the better rides that I've had all year, but it's not my favorite of the, the series, of the antique collection no, series. I hear you. Speaking of that, now is the time for us to quickly retaste these and make our order. We both have our first and second plates locked in. Now it's time for that three through five. 10 minutes later. All right, well, we stepped away. You didn't see it, but we kind of did some uh, A-B testing back and forth to round out this um, top five. And to... we didn't talk about it, so I don't know what your answers I are gonna be. I don't either. Um, to remind you guys, for uh, my top two so far, uh, in first place is George T. Stagg. In second place is the Eagle Rare, seven, Eagle Rare 17. And in my first place was the Eagle Rare 17. My second place, the George T. Stagg. So we switched it a little bit. Um, but so same top two. Now, number three. I want to put the WLW. Okay, that's actually my third place okay, as well. Okay, the William Lear Weller. That's my third place. Um, the more I sipped it, the more it grew on me. Again, mm -hmm. it, ba it barely kept itself out of the top two. Yeah. Just barely. It was a lot closer this year than last Very year. Very good, just not, not quite. It's just not quite not my tempo. tempo. Um, number four. Number four is a surprise for me. Uh, it's actually the Saz 18. Same. Okay. Saz 18. So we have the same. And there was a moment remainder. there when I thought it might be third. Um, but then oh. the more I sipped the no, WLW, the more I was like, no, that that's not. It really, really grew on me over time. Which puts the Thomas H. Handy Thomas in H. Handy in, in, fifth. in fifth. I thought for me it was going to be Handy in fourth and Saz 18 in fifth, but when I after having uh, the handy, um, uh, the Thomas H. Handy on my palate and going back to the Saz 18, I tasted this maturity, this, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, this, even though it's 90 proof, just, just. It just, it yeah. really nails it, it I did, think it so. It did, so yeah, yeah um, hanging in there in fourth place. Besides first and, first and second, which were just flip-flopped on, we've got the same we've order, got the same which is cool. ranking, yeah. Very cool. So here's our final order for the 2024 BTAC releases. And uh, some of these will be going in our best of contentions for bourbon and then yeah. some for rise. Yeah. Obviously, actually, you know which one's for. Do any of these not go in? Because the obviously. The WLW. You think the WLW shouldn't be represented? I just think it's kind of crazy to have three of the however many spots owned by these Buffalo Trace products. Let's ask them. What, what do you they guys think? think? Should it, the WLW go in our bourbon best of the year blind contention? Just because it was so close to being in the top two for this series. What if it was third overall, you know, like in terms of everything we tried this year? I don't feel that it would be, but maybe it would be. Do you guys want to know where it falls? Well, if it landed in the top 10, I feel like that would be worthy of knowing. It would be, but yeah. I feel like people would gripe, but they're going to gripe anyways. They're, they're going to gripe. We're used to that. And don't worry, we're going to do a value release coverage too. Just so, like last year. Right. Just like last year, we want to cover all the bases. We want to keep know, you guys happy. We want to keep everybody happy. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, because it isn't all about these big, big fancy releases, although it we do not. love to tell you about them. Yeah. Yeah. In, in efforts to help you make a choice, but. There you go. Yeah. Well, hey, if you haven't subscribed to us already, you can do it by clicking right up here. There's suggestions of other videos down here and hope to see you one of those. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Chad. <laughs> Until next time, drink more bourbon. Mm -hmm.